What do you call an honest Iranian businessman? Azif. <laughs> Hold me in your arms, I want to stay forever, home and away, <laughs> with you each day. <laughs> now, he mentioned my films. I was a bit embarrassed. Why are you talking about my films? I, I was in, I, you know, mostly Arab scumbag parts and things like a mummy and. Gladiator was a very interesting, I had no idea. Ridley Scott is from the northeast of England. This is a big uh, thing. I thought he was American, but no, he's uh, from northeast of England. He's no accent. Uh, oh, only when he gets a bit angry. I said, yeah, I could feel there was a bit of an accent. I said, Mr. Scott, what's your next film? He goes, I'm doing a sci-fi film. I said, ah, like a Blade Runner. He goes, yes, you've seen it? I said, yes. He goes, what do you think of it? I said, Blade Runner is okay. He goes, okay? It's brilliant, you fuck. I walked away, he goes, yeah, man, a college is a fat b <laughs> Watch you, I was gonna deal about it. <laughs> you see, I do the accent because even in Iran, we know Newcastle is a s hole, like no one has seen in the history of mankind. And come on, okay, there goes my accent. Oh my God, well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's little, um, little ethnic thing I do at the beginning. Um, <laughs> Because I could be doing a very hardline political statement about racial stereotype, but the truth is the accent gets a few big laughs and people love me, so why rock the boat? Uh, <laughs> and the truth is, um, I used to be a management consultant. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I uh, uh, it's true, and someone at the office told me I was really funny. So uh, I thought I'd give comedy a bit of a crack. And, um, and I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, it's going really well. <laughs> It's getting great. And, uh, and hey, I'm Mr. Apollo there, and guess what? I'm feeling so comfortable. I tell you, it's going great. Because this whole stand up malarkey is really, you've got to be really tough, you know, which is something I'm not really used to. Like, I was in Ireland recently, and the Irish people are very, very forthright. If they don't like you, they just say, because someone goes, hey, you're a funny man. You take your funny, you're a big fat. You think you can do that job, you big fat <laughs> I was really shocked, so you got to give it back. I said, what makes you think you can do your job, you big fat pot-bellied, forklifting Irish <laughs> He looked at me and went, yeah, you're all right, son. You're all right. You're a lovely lad. Such unity. It was, it was amazing. And for those of you who don't really know, I've been doing lots of anti-racism comedy workshops uh, for Millwall Football Club, uh, which has been a real, <laughs> no, it's been a real revelation. And you have lots of, you know, you know, lots of youth and skinheads there, and an ethnic minority shares this culture. We have an Iranian comic, right? We have this Korean juggler, comes on, it's fun. Uh, we had an Indian bingo caller, which is, if you haven't seen it, it's great. He just comes on, he goes, okay, everyone, get your cards ready, and here we go. Kebab, well done, number one. <laughs> hot, hot, vindaloo, 22. <laughs> Chutney, writer, poppadam, naan, who's at the door? 44. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just an example of the kind of stuff I used to do before 9-11. I was very, very happy. But then 9-11 happened and people were saying, you know, what's going to happen to your act? And, and people didn't realize I was so completely, completely uh, emotionally in turmoil. Of this. I mean, you, see, you want to really understand that Mid Middle Eastern people, especially Iranians, we're very emotional people. We're very passionate about, ev about everything, even in love. I mean, I'm married to an English person, and you know, she's very cool. But for us, when you're in love, you make noises. We say, well, I love you so much. We say, you start getting crazy. We say, I love you. We do, we do crazy things. We say, I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you so much. I've got to cut my arm. I've got to write you a poem in my own blood. Ah. Read it. Read it, you. And she was so calm, just took the poem and went, oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. And, and lots of people stopped seeing my act. I'm mean, not talking about lots of people, I'm talking about really ethnically aware people. People, you know, people like who live in Putney or East Sheen, and so, you know, people say, you, you are such a credit to your community. It's so great, you know. <laughs> you know, the kind of people who even get my name right, because we can pronounce it, Omid Jalil, we even know what it means. Omid means hope, Jalil means the great one, the hope of the great one. What a wonderful name. But we'll call you Trevor, if that's all right. <laughs>